Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fix Your Form. This is Silent Mike. I'm here to fix your form for free. We need three reps at 70% sent to askmikke at gmail.com if you want to get involved. We got some sumo pulls. Overall, my mans, looking really, really clean. Uh, You see a little bit of a jolt there off the ground, which shows me that you don't have full tension and slack out of your system. So I'd like you to see that chest pull a little bit higher, no slack in your arms, and also hips a hair higher at the start. Your second, third reps are great, but on that first one, you can see that jolt where you come off tension onto tension. So hips a hair higher, a little bit more of your weight back, no slack in your back, hams, glutes, or those arms. We need to get all the slack out of that system, tension through everything. So when you pull, the bar immediately heads upwards, not your body and then the bar. More sumo pulls. Let's see what we got. Overall, not bad. I wish I could see a side version. We'll see what's happening with that back. But overall, I'd say really, really good. The bar sneaks away a little bit at your knees. That last rep's a little bit better. You can see the bar sneak away from you at the knees a little bit. You might need to move your stance in to be able to force those knees out. And I know that doesn't always make sense when you think about it. Um, but sometimes we're at our uh, our very end when people are trying to go with that ultra wide stance. We did a little post on Kaizen Training Official on Instagram if you guys want to check that out uh, a couple days back. Uh, but we talk about kind of getting those knees over our midfoot. And sometimes if your stance is too wide uh, and your mobility or your thigh bone, your femur isn't long enough, we can't get into the position we want. What we perfectly want is obviously a, a vertical torso if we could, a very flat back, uh, vertical shins, as well as knees over our ankles or our midfoot. Uh, but it's very difficult to get all of those things correct depending on our anatomy or our leverages. Um, so we do the best we can. Uh, for you, my man, I'd move, move that stance in maybe half an inch. Keep forcing those knees out. And then, oh, here we go. Here's that side version I wanted. Uh, and then also make sure that bar stays nice and close to your body. Yeah, see, the knees just travel a little too far forward, and that's why you kick it forward, and that's why the bar path gets a little wobbly off the ground, and then gets even more wobbly near your knees. Kind of that starting position before you even drop your hips extra would probably be even better right there, Um, where the knees and shins are vertical, uh, excuse excuse me, the the shins are vertical, and your hips are just a hair higher. Uh, It may feel weird, it may feel like you're too bent over at the start, but not everybody can pull sumo with a super uh, vertical torso. It's just not possible. We're not as, not everybody's as mobile enough and not everybody has long enough arms. Sometimes uh, it's going to look a hair more like a conventional, um, but once we're locked in, we'll still just be able to flex those quads and squeeze those glutes to finish the lift. It'd still be uh, a little bit different in terms of the motor pattern, um, but what we need, my man, hips a hair higher, shins more vertical, um, but overall really, really good. Keep that bar nice and close. Now we're moving on to conventional. Shout out to the guy in the background that took a little pre-workout poop. It always feels a little bit better to be a little bit lighter. Uh, my man right here, we got to fix that low back. It looks like you're arching a little bit too much. Uh, it's good that you're a little bit mobile and can control that. Uh, but what I want you to do is really breathe into that belt and think about pulling those ribs down a hair. You can see right above the belt and below the belt, we have a little bit of a dip there. Under maximal loads, you're going to snap back and you're going to end up with a rounded back. So what we'd rather do is just start really braced and really neutral. Uh, one, I don't think you'll get injured, but Uh, It's just going to be a stronger position if we're totally compact uh, and and totally round, totally straight, if that makes sense. We'll be able to transfer that weight, the the strength, the power from your heels into the ground, into your glutes, into your low back, and finally move that bar. So pull those ribs down a little bit. You're almost thinking about doing like one-eighth of a crunch. Nice big breath. Everything else, though, looks really, really good. Lockout strong. Starting position strong. Hopefully you got, that guy used some poopery in the background so you're not getting a little whiff second rep there because I might miss groove, might mess you up. I hate when that happens. Your mid pull, you're really concentrating on your form. You're concentrating on this perfect rep because you're about to send it into your favorite YouTuber and all of a sudden you get a whiff of feces screwing you up, rolling through the gym. It's absolutely, absolutely a game changer. But hopefully that guy, a little bit of poopery, if you guys don't know, not an ad, not sponsored, not hashtag ad in this, a little poopery will go a long way. Um, 
Again, if you fix those ribs, hips might look a hair higher, uh, but overall it's going to make your lockout a little bit stronger. Uh, it's also just going to make your overall lift a little bit better, not only at 70%, but also 100%. I think we got a bunch more polls, guys. Again, if you appreciate these kind of videos, if you enjoy these kind of videos, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications. We're dropping new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Twitch streaming live stream is in the description every Monday through Friday. Shout out to this facility. More kilo plates, those beautifully lined up benches. Shout out to my mans right here. Beltless conventional poles. Overall, I'd say it looks really, really good. There's a slight re-dip uh, and repositioning around your knee. You want to make that a little bit smoother. We want that bar patch to be totally efficient, going straight up, not heading downwards at all. Maybe it was just a blip in that rep itself. Maybe that's not normal for you, but I can only call it like I see it. Um, so one thing I'll try to do is actually get those hips just a hair higher, get those knees a bit out of the bar path. You can see right there, it's just a little funky around the knees. We want that bar to move as efficiently as possible. Obviously, the straightest bar path, if not slightly heading back towards you on the conventional pull. Um, and just having your hips a little bit higher will help that out. A lot of people try to get their hips really, really low because they'll see their favorite power lifter do it or they're just told, you know, lower your hips, chest up, something of that nature. Uh, and for many cases, if you're not built that way, you may not be able to pull that. We got some ladies pulling. It's a lady pulling day. Not the best angle. I can't see that back too well with this. I understand you're in a crowded gym. Um, back looks a little bit uh, roundy. Um, we want to try to fix that. And I think with you as well as this last gentleman, you're just thinking about getting your hips too low. Um, you almost think want, want to think about back flat and hips backwards. Thinking about pushing yourself, falling backwards, shoulders behind the bar rather than hips down. Often that'll get them too close to the bar or you almost curl yourself underneath and that is not what we want. That's gonna make a very inefficient lockout plus maybe put our back in a little bit of a, 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 a detrimental position. So um, another thing that I've talked about many a time in many a video, um, but it's very common. It's very common and a lot of people maybe don't understand it or are too scared to try it. Let's loosen up that belt a little bit. Maybe just one notch. The belt doesn't have to be tight. The belt Belt's actually not holding anything in. It's not actually protecting you. It's not allowing you to lift more weight. You are by pushing into that belt. So if we have maybe half an inch to an inch in between your stomach and the belt while unbraced, what we want to do is push that stomach, sides, and low back into the belt, as well as those hips a bit higher. And I think you'll feel a little bit more efficient, a little tighter over time. Now, all these suggestions that I give will take a little bit of getting used to. They're not going to automatically make you lift more weight or automatically feel stronger, but two, three, four weeks of practicing with these tips and cues that I've sent you guys individually or people out there that are slowly tweaking their form, over time, you'll feel a little bit better. My man's pulls here look really, really clean. The first rep and third rep are perfect. Second's a hair jerky. I think you can lock those lats in a little bit more, especially with straps, especially conventional. Think about pulling that bar around your shins, bending it like a U-horn, uh, and maybe even try getting your eyes up because your back looks nice and flat, a great position. I appreciate you guys for sending it in. Appreciate all the support. Give this thing a thumbs up. Silent Mike, new videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm out of here. Talk to you guys soon.